these are the best 20 fantasy books that booktubers you love read last year. I watched more than eight hours of booktube and added at least two extra to compile all the different books that we saw and we got a total of 200 different books mentioned by your favorite booktubers which in essence were 140 unique books. Now what I did is to combine all of these lists and to ensure that the ranking that the booktuber gave it, it was reflected with points. Then I sum all of those points and in here you see the top 20 books that got either more mentions, that's the reason why it got summed up the most, or that it was such a favorite for one or multiple booktubers that it just appeared in the list even if it was only mentioned by one or two of these booktubers, but it was their absolute favorite. So let's get into them, starting with Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. This is a story that I am so happy it is here because it is not new, it was released a long time ago and because I love short stories, it was pitched by Leonie in this case and she loved it not only because each of these short stories is mind-blowing but because the writing style is so unique, it is so powerful and honestly these stories have so much potential. The film Arrival, it's inspired in one of the stories that we have here but just to give you a grasp of what are the things that get mentioned in this book, you have that story so how language can influence how we perceive and how we label things but there's also the story of this Tower of Babel, this tower that it's so big that it's managed to break kind of like heaven that has surpassed the limit to the sky and what you see above is kind of like heaven and it is so mind-blowing there are a lot of good things here it is not a light read it's a read that makes you reflect it's full of sci-fi elements and it's my favorite book of Ted Chiang I really really recommend as well and if I can share a secret with you I started taking online classes to learn how to write short stories just for fun I, they are terrible. They will never see the light of the day. But I love learning the prompts and strategies to create a character-driven story. So that Chiang, you know, get ready. I just loved it so much that I went to Skillshare. They are a big learning online community with thousands of different classes where you can learn from design, writing, productivity, photography, and beg them to please sponsor this video with a link that allowed you to have one month free so that you can take advantage of this class so that you have enough time to test any of the learning paths. And they really have something for everyone. If you're thinking to start a YouTube channel, they have a learning path on that, that it's led by Ali Abdal, who is a massive YouTuber. And there's the basics that suggest you to start with how to speak confidently into a camera, then how to edit. There's a lot. If you want to hone your writing skills like me, you will get into the mindset on what are the things that you need to do in order to unlock a magical and unique story, but also what are the different things that you need to do in order to craft those characters. And it just, a definitely definitely recommend there's going to be a link in the description the first 500 people to click that link will have one month free and now let's go to the top 19. in the top 19 we have a completely different story which is one for my enemy by olive blake the same author as the atlas six now this story was the favorite of Carrie can read and what you can see here is a story that it's basically a retelling of romeo and juliet but we will be in new york which already it's kind of like Cool, that's cool. But there's going to be witches and there's going to be this very angsty relationship and these powerful elements with this mafia element and all of that combined it's supposed to be making a story that is truly compelling, that it's absolutely heartbreaking and heart-punching and after seeing this book and the reviews on Goodreads I really want to read it and give it a try. I don't believe it's my cup of tea because it's an urban fantasy which it's not usually my favorite but I've heard so many good things so if you read it and you've loved it or not let us know down below in the comments and help us out deciding if we should read this book or not. In the top 18 we have a cozy fantasy that has been the discussion of a lot of booktubers for a while now and no it is not Legends and Lattice it's the very secret society of irregular witches. This is a story that for me screamed House in the Cerulean Sea plus witches. It is really a story that blends this whimsy element of of needing to train these children and to ensure they are kept safe and perfect while discovering yourself. In this case, we have this witch that basically lives in this world where witches cannot exist and they have sworn to not do magic. But our girl is kind of like doing 
incredible things on Instagram and one day she's called to take care of these two little witches and the story unfolds from there there's this romance also that happens it's not the main point it's more I guess the story on how these little girls are treated and how our girl evolves through time and how she sees magic and herself it is really really cozy it is really really comfy and it is a favorite for a lot of people and let me know your thoughts because oh boy I was surprised by the ones that appear in position number 17 11 and position number fourth let me know if that's also shocking for you in position number 17 and this one completely shocked me we have dungeon crawler carl a book that i've never ever heard about in my life however the premise sounds really good and you know, it got peached by different booktubers so well that it was like, okay, fine, I need to read it now. The premise blends Dungeons and Dragons plus this Ready Player One kind of story where you have this frantic pacing where you need to advance, where you have this different quest. And the theory is that one day aliens do something to the world, everything collapses and everyone kind of dies. But the resembles is that within the earth, there's now these different platforms and and people that want to survive need to pass these different levels and there are these different bosses so it's all very weird very unique and let me know again if you read this because mind blown about it. In position number 16 we have A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. This is the prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree, a standalone that completely surprised me because it was at the same time beautiful and so vivid and it was one of the few books I've read in my life that really has allowed me to see things. I'm very bad at seeing what I'm reading and it was everything so vivid but at the same time it kind of lagged at the end I was not completely fulfilled about it so it really surprised me that blend how you can do something so good but then not deliver perfectly but it seems that this prequel kind of takes what it's great about Priory and it just makes it better so I'm really hoping for Day of Fallen Night to be a story that completely steals my heart it's epic fantasy and it has a very good blend of characters and plot driven story while having these different dragons as the background of the story in position number 15 we have a favorite of both Patrick Leo and Library of a Viking two dear friends of mine and that is the dragon born chair about Todd Williams. This is a story that it's not something that I would say oh yeah this really screams I want to read it but just the fact that it's a story that has inspired so many people to write their own fantastic stories such as George R. R. Martin or Christopher Paolini with Aragorn it just it, it is something that kind of demands to be written if I'm talking about fantasy right? However warning this is a story that reads fairly slow it seems but it is epic in proportions and it has this beautiful classic fantasy element it's a story about kings about alliances and about what happens i'm not sure if i will give this one a try although i am really compelled to read this one in position number 14 we have the Green Bone Saga by Fon Lee. Now, and here what I did, both Jade CD and Jade War were mentioned, so I nested it all together in Green Bone Saga. It is a story that has so many good things. It is one of the most character-driven stories that I've read in a way that these characters felt real, felt really well-crafted, Fondly, just for that, it's a genius in my opinion. The way in which she was able to craft characters that felt relatable while also stealing your heart and driving you nuts, it is absolutely mesmerizing. It's at its core this fight between two different clans for the control of the Jade. But what you see, it's more of the strategy of the structure of each of these different clans and how each of these different clans have their roles and the things that they need to do. They're savage scenes and there's so many heartbroken elements it just it stole my heart there's a scene in book one if you read it you know that brought me to tears and just book two it's phenomenal and the conclusion of this saga it's so very well done how the author changed the scope and did something very unique but so fulfilling it is mesmerizing and i'm so happy whenever i see any of these books in the best books a lot of people have read 
cannot recommend enough. In position number 14, a book that I've heard a lot about lately, especially thanks to Mike, to Patrick, and now Daniel Green, and that is San Eater by Christopher Rucchio. I'm about to read this with my Patreon, so if you would like to read it and discuss it together, join us, we will have a blast with it. But this is a space opera, and it's supposed to be one of the best sci-fi books a lot of people have read. This story seems so fascinating, although I'm a little bit afraid because it is a long series, it is not short. And I bought this one, which is the only one that was available, and the letter, the font, it is so minuscule, so I will lose my sight for this book, but it is supposed to be all worth it. We will follow this main character who's supposed to be this hero of a war past, and he is kind of like someone that completely devastated worlds or killed a lot of people and he is now stranded in this land where he will need to fight for something that he does not believe for an enemy that he will never understand. I'm really compelled about this one and really I am getting a lot of FOMO of like what is happening here. So let me know if you're about to read it as well and join us if you want to do it together. In position number 13, we have Murder Bought by Martha Wells. It is same thing that happened with Greenbone Saga. A lot of different books, especially the first one, was mentioned. So I'm bringing you like this series. This is a story that now that I'm entering into my sci-fi era again, I cannot wait to read. There is a lot of hype around this book, not only because it's told under this perspective of Murder Bought, but because it's supposed to be a blend of great sci-fi but also very relatable characters in in this case the robot and a great depiction of you know a lot of mental illnesses or mental human disturbances like social awkwardness and kind of like not wanting to be with people which i can relate not always not always i really love you but you know you know and also a lot of humor and i love usually that blend. I love those books that have that element of humor. I cannot wait to read this one and hopefully to love it. In position number 11 we have The Last Tale of the Flower Bride, which is a standalone that I am really compelled to read because what I read as the summary on Goodreads and what I hear from people that have read it, it's so different that I, I don't know what to share with you. But I feel it's the kind of book that the less you know, the more you enjoy. It's a gothic story that will revolve around secret and that there's lush fairy elements involved to it and that's it. I don't want to share anything else. I even don't want to but it is a story within the story kind of world and honestly it's been described as being beautiful in terms of writing style and also this very beautiful setting, this incredibly mesmerizing pacing and I just I will read this like soon, very soon. In position number 13, and I'm shocked this is here because it was my favorite book of last year, we have The Wheel of the Many, which granted it has been one of the favorite books from also Patrick Leo, but it wasn't a favorite for a lot of other booktubers, therefore why it is here. But you can already see where this is going, right? It is going to be an amazing list. And The Wheel of the Many reads similar to Red Rising in the sense of we have this society that has different layers, the power resides in the one at the top, the one at the bottom are kind of like very oppressed and in this case we have the ones at the top extracting the power from the ones at the lower layers and we have this boy that it's about to be infiltrated in this school where he will try to learn what happens and he will try to resolve a mystery. It is this military academic setting therefore but it is also inspired in this Roman Empire setting which it was very unique. It's a story that manages the intrigue very well. The plot twists are fantastic and it just it has something so amazing done with the great way in which the characters are described plus the pacing the ending it just is still mind-blowing to me and I cannot wait to read book two it's phenomenal incredibly addictive and I cannot wait for you to read this and let me know if you've loved it next we have Red Rising and in this case we have a lot of books mentioned especially the first one Red Rising but also Golden Sun and Lightbringer which was the book that was released last year now as a whole this story also has a beautiful blend of character and plot driven story there's this very sci-fi fantasy element to it and the main thing that Pierce Brown is able to do in my opinion and in the one of a lot of different booktubers is to really strike a chord like the emotions that this book is able to convey with you are very intense there's a granted a little bit of the main character knowing more that it 
allows you to know which it's at times a little bit unnerving but it was so very well done and overall this is a story that reads fast and it just it is unforgettable and getting into the top 10 next we have blood of a bright haven by ml1 this is a story that i'm not happy i'm thrilled this is here it's from the same author as the sword of kagan and i still feel it's a story that not a lot of people have read and it just it just blows my mind it is getting more popularity and i'm just like yeah this deserves all the praise that it has it's dark academia at its finest if you like erf kwang please 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 give this one a go because it is just phenomenal beginning to end we'll follow this woman that it's about to become the first woman mage and she will try to be the best one and will try to lead this mission of expanding this magic towards the city to take more people into safety and what we will see there's a lot of plots there's a lot of twists and turns there's a lot of savage points and overall it's a story that it's not incredibly like bloody but it's definitely savage in that era of Kwang unique way. In the top seven, we have Age of Madness by Joe Abercrombie. Now this is the continuation of the first Lord trilogy and this is the one that compels me the most. I've heard that, yeah, first Lord, cool, but Age of Madness, it's phenomenal. And a lot of people have told me, don't go there if you haven't read first Lord, but duh, 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 I heard so many good things. And it's a story that it's supposed to have incredible main characters that have these perfect blend and if you read the comments and if you hear the reasons why these different booktubers are pitching this it's just plain perfection every book in the saga it's consistently placed at five stars and it is scream dark but it's also very cunning there's also these gray characters that are strangely relatable and i cannot wait for them in position number six we have the bound and the broken series by ryan cahill again in this case we have a lot of people mentioning book one book two book three and what can i say this is a story that i have not read it's epic fantasy and its speech is being not only phenomenal starting from book one onwards but that the skill of the author just get honed and honed and better and improved and that what you read is so mind-blowing that you're like i want more and i definitely want that feeling so in this case we have this high fantasy story where the land is divided we have this part that is taking care of the other and we have this boy that it's about to do this trial something happens and the story unfolds from there we have dragons in this world i really want that classic fantasy element with this twist i am sure this is going to be a very engaging read for me and i cannot wait now getting into the top five, we have Jumi and the Nightmare Painter, which was secret project number three and my favorite one, one of my favorite books of last year. This is a story that takes a lot of inspiration from Final Fantasy X, also your name, and it is beautiful, not only because the world building was fascinating, we have these two very different elements. One world, it's complete darkness surrounded and illuminated by just two neon lights, and the other, it's one where you can talk with the gods, but just by balancing stones, everything is so unique unique but also because there was some quiet some very cherishable and very cute elements and it was almost cozy while having this perfect blend of action there's definitely a sound launch in here and i absolutely loved that beginning to end the illustrations are phenomenal but what i love the most is the concept of one of these characters that eats a nightmare painter and he needs to paint these nightmares and after doing that the power of these nightmares gets dissolved and i found that concept very unique very mesmerizing and there's this freaky friday kind of element where these characters who out of the blue will change places and each one will need to learn the place of the other while being very close and being following one to each other in position number four we have a book that i'm also very shocked that is here because it was sadly one of my not best reads of the year and that's the book that wouldn't burn by mark lawrence now i absolutely get the hype about this it's a book that has a blend of fantasy and sci-fi that talks about libraries that talks about different worlds and just what's not to love about this right it got to a point that it was too confusing and i was slightly lost but it was definitely a me thing the magic of this book is that you will follow these two different perspectives that both revolve around this library that is as big as cities every book that will be ever written is there and you can see already where this is going there's a mystery something that needs to be unraveled and it's a story that although in my opinion leaned to the lower side it definitely had that 
question, that intrigue of what's gonna happen here. In the top three, we have the Fits and the Fool trilogy by Robin Hobb. So a lot of Robin Hobb was mentioned. This trilogy just got here because it got more votes, but Ship of Magic and also the Farseer trilogy got here. And Robin Hobb, it's the queen of writing characters, right? Like she is character driven. She writes in a way that everyone is crying. And what you can see here also in how these books were mentioned and as well as the reviews that you read on Goodreads are just heartbreaking. And I have not read this one myself. I'm starting with Sheep of Magic, but this one, it's another installment in the realm of the Erdlings world. And we will be reunited with Fitz. I don't want to talk more about this because the story, it's promising us a lot of heartbreak and a lot of good characters. So now you already know. In the top two, we have Dress of the Emerald Sea, which was the first installment in the Year of Sanderson by Sanderson. It's a story that I'm kind of shocked that it is here because it's a cozy fantasy with a very uplifting tone. It is told from the perspective of Hoyt and it is this almost fairy tale style. It is whimsical and it is kind of like the Princess Bride with a twist, which was very unique and we will follow Tress. She one day realized that her love has been kidnapped and she decides to take things into her hands and to resolve all of these. And what we discover is a story full of pirates. It also has a beautiful world building and you know, the magic system, it's around the world and it is very interesting. It's not that our characters are magical, but the world has those magical elements. It's incredibly easy to read and I cannot recommend it more. And in top one, no surprises here. We have The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. Now, a lot of books got mentioned. Grace of Kings got mentioned. A lot of people got The Wall of Swords, which is book two. Some people mentioned book three. Book two, it's one that just won it. And this series, I've just read book one and two and I've loved them. It is so unique as a concept. You will follow this rise and fall of these characters. And in essence, you're following this different empire and the different people that wants to rule it. It is deeply political. It has this silk punk element that it's kind of like you have these machines while this having this almost medieval land and it is deeply political, deeply strategical. And the mind of these characters is just so unique, so mind blowing. Like why, how, how, like, Ken Liu is a genius after this. He himself said that he does not believe that he has in him another book, like another story like this. And it's like, no wonder you, you took something amazing and like the scope, everything. Just how can you have all of those different threads in your mind? Like, tell me what's your secret? Anyway, this is a story that reads more into the historical fantasy side. It is book one more plot driven and book two it's more character driven and just the scope improves so massively the characters are so unique and you just you get to love them and to feel for them and this was also one of my favorite reads of last year if you want to see the rest here's the video where you can check that out